Our next guest for the Dorigo sessions of an otherwise quiet room is world-famous bluegrass mandolin player Mike Compton. Mike's recorded and toured with Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, Doc Watson, Ralph Stanley, and was one of the contributing artists and consultants for the Coen Brothers film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? As well as being a brilliant, brilliant artist, he's also very funny and very generous, and I so enjoyed playing music with him and getting to interview him for you, my otherwise quiet room audience. Enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us at the Dorigo 2018 and otherwise quiet room sessions. Thank you, Mandy. Glad to be here. <laughs> Is this your first Dorigo? No, it's, I think it's my third. They blur into yeah. one after a while, right? Yeah. I know you've got a few dates for this tour. You're going through Melbourne and... Um... Yes, I'm going, to be going down, uh, got some stuff in Sydney and then down, down to Roll and uh, Kuma and Canberra and then over to Melbourne and mountain grass and then from there to Perth and then down to Albany and uh, was another place on the way up and then Fremantle and a couple more things around Perth and then back across to Yenar to hang out with the Streslicky boys. Nah, and, and I love the string, yeah. the Streslicky string buses. They're the best. You can't, you can't beat 15 guitars all at once. <laughs> no. And the way they all move together towards the mic and back. It's so yeah. funny. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so infectious. And then I'm, then I'm going to go uh, to uh, Camperdown 
and, and see the, the man that made this mandolin. And Mr. It, Duffy? Mr. Gilchrist. Oh, oh, of course, of course. Mr. Duff is actually the one that has uh, helped make most all of this trip possible. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't. Yeah, I got a hold of him on the phone and I said, hey, reckon we could throw some stuff together for October and November? And he said, yeah, I'll, 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 we'll start. Fantastic. So, is it just the two months that you're out here? Yes, it is. I'm I'm trying to get together some stuff to come back in uh, March and April, but I don't know if it's going to work out yet. In 2019, maybe too much Mike Compton. No, never. never. <laughs> um, so we, I I particularly love this festival because of all of the diverse music. I mean, the speaking bagpipes. of bagpipes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, I think um, I've been seeing you play in various incarnations for, for a while. Of course, you're famously of the Soggy Bottom Boys. Yeah. Uh, and are you thinking about doing any more gigs with them? There is word that there's probably going to be some more of, uh, of those booked for next year. And uh, I think around uh, eight or ten gigs and then for the next year, maybe two or three times that many. So there's, there's yeah. still quite a demand. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, for, for those listeners who don't know, that's that's an Oh Brother, We're Out There reference right there. So if you, yeah. want, to, if you want to follow that scene, that's that's where to go. Check out Mike Compton's on, online presence and you'll see where the gig's coming Still up. around, minus the soggy bottom. <laughs> well, I, eventually you've got to find a towel, right? <laughs> or a mop, depending. <laughs> um, I'm really, I was really stoked that you came and, and did this interview with us. I mean, we're, I not, happy to. we're not a huge name, so it's, it's really great of you. Do, you. do you do a lot of this stuff? A uh, pretty good bit, yeah. Do you it's, have to answer lots of awkward questions about your career choices? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the most awkward question you've been asked? Oh, I don't know. You don't have to give me the answer. I don't, I don't, I don't know. There's not anyone in particular. Some. You know, basically things that I don't have answers to, or mainly uh, questions that would take an academic to to answer. You know, because there's, I think academics have have ways of explaining things uh, to people that, that that maybe don't play music that that helps them to understand it. Where I don't think musicians have really th really well thought out answers to some of the reasons why they do things or what. What, what an album represents or you know what's your vision or all, I don't know just playing music and and because uh, I like to you know but, but that's sometimes that's not a good enough answer you were saying before I was asking you what you were uh, playing in the car and you're like well nothing because I want to concentrate on what I'm working yeah on. yeah I mean I I realize that you asked me a fair question but I mean in all fairness to, to me I when I'm in the car anymore usually I don't listen to music because uh, solitude is at a premium in in my life. Uh, traveling around and, and being in front of d varying numbers of people at one time. When I'm I'm at home or when I'm in the car, most of the time I don't listen to music. I'm certainly not in the car, and and I and I hate to ride in a car with what there's other people in the car talking and trying to, you know, I I put in a CD to listen to music to enjoy it rather than have as background noise. Yeah. So, you know, if there's people in the car talking, I just don't even turn it on. Well, I think I prefer to listen to one thing at a time as well. I yeah, I've, I've spent more of my time at home uh, giving lessons or, or working on tunes. I'm, I've have had a creative spree here recently, and I've been writing a lot of uh, old-time-sounding fiddle tunes mm -hmm. uh, of my own. So I, I spend more time working on that and practicing and, and uh, trying to get better. I think I think I see some improvement. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's what I do. I th I think it's inspiring. It makes me feel a lot better about not knowing all of the things about. I I don't know every release of every publication that Alan Lomax or Cyril Tawney or Cecil Sharp made. But and, people do. But some people really do. I used to work for Elvis Costello for a couple of years, and and he could probably <laughs> name the majority <laughs> of the albums that he owned. And and who was in Fairport Convention at exactly what date? And right. I don't, I can't. It's just like baseball cards or soccer scores, or you I know. just kind of want to learn the harmonies and sing the songs yeah. and, and do stuff. Yeah. And on that note, um, I would be delighted if you would uh, play us one of your one of your things on your own. Um, okay. Just, just for our otherwise quiet room. Let guys. me let me give it a, a second of thought, and I'll All do right. that.
Because I'm sick.